Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest is also our first ever guest. And depending on how this goes, maybe he's not our last ever guest. He is the author of the recently published Bad Movie Bible, a book which all crap film fans should have in their life and on their shelf. He has 100 reviews of good bad films and much more besides. And by this point, he's probably sat through more shit cinema than the rest of us will do in our entire lives. He's been tirelessly pounding the promotional treadmill, appearing at screenings, film clubs, and conventions. And now he's come all the way from Guildford to be with us tonight. So please buy a book to come in train fare and give him a warm crap film club welcome, Mr. Rob Hill! Yay! All good. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna crack straight on because uh, yeah, we've got a lot of stuff to get through tonight. Uh, but it's wonderful to have you here. It's Thank you for having me here. Yeah, yeah. good. Um, so question number one: um, Apart from having a love of bad films, what gave you the impetus to write the book? Did you, did you think there was a gap in the market, or just that the time was right? I needed to earn a living. <laughs> right. That was, that was basically it. But no, I, I, was, I worked in post-production for 15 years in, in Soho, and wanted to get out of it. I wrote a couple of books to, for, um, for like a publishing company, just like a coffee table nonsense, and realised suddenly that there's this whole big community out there who love the same shitty movies that I did and do growing up. And I just didn't really realise it because I got into social media so much and so on. So I thought maybe that's something I could do, try and try and get the beauty of these movies across yeah. to, to a wider audience. I think, I think you really have. Um, uh, first of all, I want to sort of say thanks for sending me an advanced copy, um, which I actually devoured in about two or three sittings. Uh, I mean, you know, you could treat it as a coffee table book because you can very easily dip in and out of it, but I found it really, uh, really compelling. Uh, just beautifully written and the, the presentation is great. So I think, you know, if you've really got any interest in bad films, I think, yeah, you'll really like, get a lot out of it. So, um... Thank you. It's a good toilet book. Good toilet book. <laughs> coffee, table book, kitchen book, bed book. Uh, how many films did you actually watch whilst writing the book and have there been any side effects? Uh, that's the main side effect. Right. This <laughs> here and this here. Um, the the main side effect, really, apart from health issues, is that it's really difficult to watch proper movies again after doing half a dozen a day for for month after month. Yeah. I mean, I thought I'd seen a lot of bad movies, but you start putting feelers out on the internet and asking people like yourself, what you know, what should I be watching that I haven't seen, and you get inundated with recommendations. And of course, no one ever watches movie recommendations, do they? People say, oh, I'm watching them. But I, I, you know, I, I absolutely did. Everything anyone recommended to me, I watched. And that meant half a dozen movies a day for a couple of months. And it, over the whole course of the process, probably about a thousand, wow. about a thousand for just a free search. Think, you know, yourself lucky that there's not more cycles to control. <laughs> but no, fair play. Um, what was the criteria for including a film in the book? Uh, and out of the 101 reviews, because there was one film you just couldn't exclude. Um, I was told by some expert in something or other that you have to do 101, not 100. Right. So that's why there's 101. Funny enough, I've only recently realised there's actually 102. Oh, right. <laughs> which, if anyone, because someone called it up at a, at a signing, and I obviously pretended, but well, I'm, I'm kind of referencing bad extra. movies. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I'm referencing bad movies by deliberately getting it wrong, but actually, it was, I don't know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, like talking about number of films that you've sat through, do you always sit through a whole film, even if it's completely boring? Uh, are there any films which suddenly get good after the first 20 minutes? Because that's basically how much yeah, I watch, yeah. and I kind of go, ah, I don't think this has got the, the right stuff. Uh, and do you think it matters whether you watch bad films alone or with, uh, with friends? Well, I, I do think you kind of have to watch it all, but in some cases I will start skipping on, in the, you know, skip the middle section out. But you get to, you know, sometimes it's the end that's the best bit. Yeah. And you kind of have to know that. Yeah. But, um, and, and with regard, I would have said a year ago, there's no point, you know, you, you mustn't watch these movies on your own. Of course not. You watch them with friends, you watch them at events like this. Yeah. But I kind of broke through that barrier, uh, having to <laughs> break through you that barrier. the other side. Is that and, yeah, and there, is, there is light on the other side of that tunnel. Yeah. It's, you, I, I'm now in a place where I can enjoy these movies, you know, on my own. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you don't need friends anymore? No, I don't really have friends. I've spent six months writing books. 
I mean, yeah, like sort of going off track for a second, um, I mean, not every film in the book gets sort of 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 and stuff with uh, I, I have to say sort of thanks to you in a way for introducing me to the film A Talking Cat, question mark, exclamation mark, which uh, if you were here at our screening last time, uh, I put the trailer on, and that's as far as we're going to go, I'm not going to watch the whole film because in your book you actually say, don't do it unless you're a masochist, yeah. but yeah, to be introduced to a film where, uh, I think it is supposed to be a children's film, is that right? It's a, it's a family film. It's a family <laughs> film, what kind of family I don't know, but you've got you know, uh, the cat is voiced by uh, Eric Roberts, Eric his brother of Julia, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, drunk uh, or hungover, pissed no, off. He's, he's hammered. He's absolutely, he's absolutely he's hammered. hammered. He's, he's definitely there for money. But he's also in a wind tunnel by the sound yeah, of it. Yeah, I think it's his bathroom. It's, it's in his bathroom. Yeah. So you, uh, you just go away and do your bit and bring it back and we'll just use it. And, and the set, it's the director's house. Right. Well, David Dakota who anyone here may or may not know, who's been around for donkey's years, he's right. making Linnea Quigley horror movies in the 80s, and he's and he's he still makes these bizarre homoerotic kind of fetish, like gay fetish movies, right. which are just shirtless men in the woods. Okay. And his, his third line, aside from crappy horror and crappy homoerotic movies, is these strange family movies that are all meant to be uplifting and teach you about acceptance and so on. <laughs> There's a talking dog as well, and I think there's a, a talking pony. Does he get other sort of uh, actors with drink problems to voice? The no, it's always Eric Roberts. It's always Eric Roberts. David Carradine's dead. So okay, right, fine. <laughs> and does you know, he get involved in the gay fetish stuff as well? It seems so. Yeah, yeah. okay. But the main thing is he's pissed and he's pissed off. Okay, um, do you still find that a lot of people don't grasp, still don't grasp the concept of enjoying a bad film? Uh, and which film would you recommend them as a starting point? Yeah, no, it's, it's a difficult thing, isn't it? You need to be in the right frame of mind, it needs to be the right movie, you need to be in the right company, certainly if you're not used to them. But, I mean, I, I'd be reluctant to recommend Neil Breen as a first, as an introduction, <laughs> although he's my favourite, but I think some of that Samurai Clock or Miami Connection, you can't go too wrong. Or if you want to ease yourself in gently, then the Chuck Norris movie. <laughs> Chuck Norris is fantastic, yeah. and they're kind of, you know, they're in focus, they're, they're edited by real people, it's, they're not that bad, but no. they have that, that bad fun. It's the first sort of stepping stone. Yeah, yeah it's, it's entry it? level. Yeah, and it'll be a bit hardcore for some people. But, um, I did hear a shout out for Green when we saw him on the, on the screen, was it you were there? Green, hey. green, green lover. Green lover? The green machine. <laughs> I've got some questions about Brie, but I'll come, come to him in a minute. Um, what's your earliest memory of enjoying a film for all the, all the wrong reasons? Um, which film was it? God, well, you, you, you kind of don't really know, do you, when you're young? But I suppose, right. I mean, there is no age at which Godzilla is convincing. <laughs> so probably, probably those Toho monster movies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a bit, that my, I've got a couple of small kids, and they love those movies. Yeah. And you know they're, they're being primed for later life. When yeah, would you be disappointed if they didn't get into bad films? Would you be like, you're leaving home soon as you're 18? There are there are worse things. <laughs> <laughs> you can do drugs, but you also have to like uh, exactly. bad films. As long as you don't become a policeman or a Catholic priest, <laughs> I'll, I'll be quite happy. With <laughs> Which is your favourite bad film and why? But, um, it, it's, it's it's impossible, isn't it? But. I would, any 80s action movie, um, I love Raw Force, it's a fantastic movie, yeah. absolutely love Raw Force, love Delta Force 2, Chuck Norris, yeah. uh, but if I had to pick any, it'd have to be Double Down probably. Yeah, a bit, a bit of the Green. The, the, the Green's the, debut. The Green's debut. Yeah. Eating tuna. Yeah, eating tuna. All the laptops switched off. All the laptops. All the phones phone. switched off. <laughs> yeah, and he's got all the medals. And all the medals. All the medals for the Green movie. Um, which is the worst we've ever seen? I knew you were going to ask this. And normally, if people are, are signing, are, are ask me this, I just say Night of Horror. 1979's Night of Horror, uh, which is about an alien uh, recounting a story. Um, but sad, it, it's just a static shot of an alien recounting a story, almost the whole movie. And it sounds so bad you can't hear what he's saying. Right. <laughs> it doesn't make, no, no, it, it's terrible. But the, the longer answer, the professional fans here uh, probably might understand more. It, there really isn't one, is there? Because 
you've got to define what a movie is. Yeah. Is it something someone's shot on his iPhone and then uploaded to the internet? Yeah. It's feature length. And then you've got to think about what the materials are they have to work with. You know, not just Tommy Wiseau's lack of talent, but whether or not someone ha has no excuse. Yeah. So th uh, for me, there are different categories, and I think Attack of the Clones, the second Star Wars prequel, is as bad as any movie I've ever seen. Yeah. If you take into account what what they had to work with, yeah, and the uh, lack of excuses they have. Yeah, exactly. They don't all the time, all the money. Yeah. So they fucked it up. <laughs> um, you've interviewed and presumably met quite a number of people that were involved in bad movies. Who did you enjoy talking to most? And was there anyone who refused to be interviewed, or is it complete denial? Uh, Tommy, definitely, uh, I enjoyed speaking to the most because he's mental. Yeah. Um, he's also the one that's in complete denial. Um, but you did interview him. I did, I did. I, did. I, did. I had to tell him it was for a, I was advised not to tell him the name of the book, so I told him it was for a cult movie book. And he just went nuts. He got really upset about it. It's, it's not a cult movie, it's proper Hollywood movie. Why is that mainstream? What's wrong with you? So I had to kind of backtrack and explain, well, you know, this is how other people see it, and so on. And he, he eventually opened up because I was honestly not, I, d I don't think the room is as bad as its reputation suggests. <laughs> I think it's. Uh, <laughs> I think it's, it's one of the weirdest movies you'll ever see, yeah. but on any given technical and creative level, it's not the worst no. of what it's doing. No. It's just really fucking weird. It is weird. And in fact, the, worst, the first time I watched it with my housemate and we watched it and we were like, is that funny? Yeah. <laughs> what did I, what did I just watch? You know, they yeah. think, Anna, my uh, lovely crap film um, co-founder, I think you seen it once and you hated it. Right? Oh, yeah, but I was quite high. But you're <laughs> So we need some of the uh, screen in it. Uh, in, 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 uh, the, the, only, the only one I spoke to, or I, I approached, who got really angry and just wasn't interested in entertaining the idea, was Neil, was Neil himself, was the Green Machine. Yeah. He, he, he just went nuts. He, he, he got really upset about his movies being considered bad. He, he thinks they're... Uh, Tommy knows that the world thinks his movie is shit. Yeah. And he just doesn't agree with them. <laughs> Neil, Green, uh, dis Neil, Neil, Neil Green just has no idea that people are laughing at his movie. He, he thinks that everyone who turns out for the, his, his last film, Pass Through, had a, a premiere in Vegas. And he thought everyone who turned out thought he was a creative genius. He just didn't understand. And it got to the point where he blocked my email account, which I didn't even know you could do. Right. But I sent him an email and got a reply saying, your, your account has been blocked from this. So you're the enemy. Yeah, I, I am. But I've, I've now got his phone number. Okay. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you whether you would interview him. And I guess I'm going to skip ahead slightly. If you could ask me Green one question, what would it be? Why? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I, I had a very brief. Uh, exchange of emails with Neil Green because um, obviously approached him to try and screw uh, faithful findings here, which I think is. This, I've only I've seen the first three. I haven't seen past three yet, so that's, that's my favourite. And um, I since found out that he just doesn't allow any film club to screen his films, like period, you know, because they'll harm a DVD sales or something. But yeah, it was they said a nice email saying hi, Mr. Green or dear Mr. Green. I want to run a Cult film club, maybe? Or just a film. I want a film club in London. Uh, I'd love to screen one of your films, think people really enjoy it. How about it? And it was just like, you can buy a DVD in two weeks. And I was like, okay, but could you, you know, I just wanted to know if I could screen the film. Uh, now you have no permission to uh, use the film for public um, reasons. Yeah. Okay, well, um, charity then? You can buy the DVD in two weeks. <laughs> your, your compatriots at the Bristol Back Film yeah. Club got fairly close. And he got close enough that Green, had, Green emailed him a, uh, a contract that he had to sign. And it involved, um, so he wasn't allowed to screen it on a weekend. He wasn't allowed to screen it after 11 o'clock. He wasn't allowed to screen it here. He wasn't screen it there. And when you read between the lines, obviously he doesn't want it to be a midnight movie. He doesn't want it to be a screening that people go to and, and laugh at. He does actually say, um, you die if you it. <laughs> Um, it's going to be awkward. It's going to really like, interrupt the flow, but he does actually say it's not a bit like movie. Like, yeah. Every time he does one of those like internet kind of um, promos for so, kickstart my next film, it's like it's not a bit like movie. 
So we've been told. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, you can't you can't make any sense of the guy. No. What can you say? Okay. So the question the question is why. I think we can, yeah. uh, we can agree on that. Um, well, we're going back to uh, Tommy Wizzou for a second. Uh, you had a photo taken with him um, at the uh, screen of, was it uh, Best Friends or the Room or in the Bristol uh, recently? Both, actually. Both, right. And he's on the cover of your book, but as we've discussed, he's notoriously sensitive about his film being called a bad movie. How did that go? <laughs> <laughs> how, did you, yeah, well, how did you walk up to him and go, and much, taken and much, book. much better than I expected, actually. It was a, it was very strange. So I, I interviewed him in January uh, for the book. Didn't say what it was for. Uh, went back down to Bristol to see him again uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and saw Best Friends, his the new movie that he's made with Greg Sestero. And then the following night, I think so. Uh, I've got to give him a book because it's going to be better coming from me than it is someone else. I was worried someone go up to him and want him to sign it. And he's going to find out sooner or later, so I'll buy the bullet to better come to me. And he was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. He was really arsy with me the day before, for no reason. And then <laughs> the night that I gave him a book with his face on the cover, <laughs> <of> bad <laughs> really <about it. laughs> he, But I was able to kind of say, oh, the whole point is these are movies that the, that the critics call bad, but the fans love, yes. which technically is true. But I didn't explain why the fans loved them, obviously. And he was quite happy. And the publisher's here tonight, and his lawyers are now stood down, temporarily at least. So, so far, so good. You're a smooth talker, Rob. You get, get by. Um, so, you have a website, badmoviebible.com, where you have further articles, reviews, and videos subsequent to the publishing of the book. Are there any plans to write a second volume of Bad Movie Bible, or are you doing everything online from now on? Um, it, it depends basically how well, I'm, the sales over Christmas will probably dictate that. I'd love to do a sequel with more of the same and I'd love to do one focusing on earlier movies because it's, I deliberately didn't want to mix up kind of your Ed Wood movies and your, your Tommy Wiseau movies. They don't kind of go together in my mind. So I'd love to do an old one and I'd love to do a sequel to this one. But the, the website will carry on going regardless. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to wrap up now, but I just want to say I particularly enjoyed being made aware of Tomcat films on your website, which we all know about the Asylum, like the Sharnado stuff, like a way shitter version of that. With I think is it all the same people like in every film, and they have like they're, they're all, are they all superhero um, yeah. themed? Well, that's yeah, they've got like a, a, a thread which is all uh, Marvel ripoffs basically. Yeah. But I mean these are the worst movies there are. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> you can get any worse. Movies. Check them out. Yeah. Yeah, check out, was it the, the Black Knight Returns? And but, yeah, the most famous one is uh, The Amazing Bulk, because they did that on Best of the World. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Amazing Bulk. But that's also the only one that's kind of tongue in cheek, so it's not, you know, I don't really know how funny it's meant to be. But yeah, they've got like The Black Knight Returns and Metal Man and <laughs> Thunderstorm, Thor, The Return of Thor, which doesn't even feature Thor. <laughs> these are literally just shot in people's bedrooms. There's no, there's no sound control. There's no lighting. There's no, these are the cheapest movies you will ever see. They are just a legal disclaimer, basically. There you are. I put a movie on that disc. What are you complaining about? That's it. And the way you mash them up, like a minute's worth of whatever film, just make me want to watch them. But that's that's trickery, and I, I'm, I'm on to you. But uh, I just want to say thank you very much again, Rob, for coming down. Um, and again, do buy the book. It's, uh, it's fantastic. We wouldn't invite Rob if he'd been a shitty book. It's uh, really, really good. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I think you will too. So please give it up again for Rob Hill.